that we're going to present the Lifetime Achievement Award um, to a figure, well, uh, who has a long, as always, to a figure with a long and distinguished career in the media. And uh, this is a particularly special award. The presenter um, is June Jacobs, uh, spent a veteran peace activist, and June was, uh, used to be president of the International Council of Jewish Women, and, and now she's very much on our board and keeps us in line. And uh, June is here. Where is June? Ah, June will come and, and present the, the Lifetime Achievement Award to a particularly uh, wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, June has also represented the uh, UN Commission on the Status of Women and many, anyway, accolades. But I'll let June take over. Thank you very much. Well, I'm delighted to be here, and I must say, lifetime achievement sounds good, but it seems that it's the end, but it's not. It's just the beginning of someone's lifetime achievement if they're as young as the person who's going to win. Uh, this person is born in the UK, but has worked, I, I read The Guardian, but if I'm in Israel or if I'm in the New York, uh, they don't get The Guardian, but I do buy The New York Times and the International Herald Tribune, and it is there that when I read that paper that something comes out at me and highlights every time. So therefore now, even if I go to Morrison's a supermarket and need a coffee, I'll sit down and I'll go very, very expensively buy a Herald Tribune just to sit with it because I'm looking for that person who writes op-eds and writes opinions that I agree with and that's enough to win as far as I'm concerned tonight. <laughs> This man was the, has been the foreign editor of the New York Times, has served in Berlin for many years, has worked in Sarajevo, has written books about it. I can't give you a lecture about all this frightful stuff because I don't know enough. I just know that when there's an achievement that comes out and hits us all, it's very important that we award that to the person who has won and who will perhaps hopefully tell you more about the sort of sophisticated stuff that he writes about, and I can't, but I'm delighted and honored to say that the winner is. Even if you feel a little uneasy about looking around that next corner, uh, journalism is not about phone calls, Nexus, uh, Google, uh, whatever form of reference, cross-reference, information uh, that you might wish to use. I believe very strongly that, on the contrary, journalism is about the smell of a place, the feel of a place, what you get when you look into somebody else's eyes, what you feel about that person, uh, how you react to a place. You know, all the antenna, I think, of a good journalist are going when he or she hits the ground. Uh, and the winner is Roger Cook. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much, June. Um, thank you, William. Thank you, uh, Dahlia. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I'm very honored uh, by this award. Um, like Jeremy, I had uh, dark hair when I was in Bosnia and a lot more of it. Uh, so that really uh, struck a chord with me. Um, and Gideon, if you feel you have a hard time uh, writing for Israelis, try writing for my American audience. Um, I was very struck by what um, Andrew said at the beginning about people's psyches, because I guess what's interested me most in journal journalism is people and trying to get inside those psyches and trying to express wider stories through the stories of people. And one of the sad things in the Middle East right now, and particularly in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, is that um, while the majority of psyches are still open to peace, uh, those psyches have a harder and harder time getting in touch with each other because of the barrier, because of the wall, because of the fence, and because of a loss of hope. And I think one of the most important things that journalists can do uh, and people like um, Gideon obviously do day to day in Israel, is try to keep um, those avenues open. Uh, try to say what it's like 
to Israelis uh, beyond the barrier? What is the daily humiliation of the Palestinian people in the occupation uh, actually like? Uh, just because it doesn't seem to register uh, doesn't mean that you should stop trying. Uh, because that is the only way, I think, that uh, we can move forward uh, toward peace. Um, let's not be too impatient with the Arab Spring. Uh, I was in Tahrir Square for two weeks. I was in Tunisia. I was in Libya. I was there in the giddy moment uh, of adrenaline. Uh, the adrenaline fades, of course, and then comes the hard part. I was remember in Berlin on the 10th anniversary of the fall of the wall, uh, one of the leaders of the uprising in the East saying, we dreamt of paradise and we woke up in North Rhine-Westphalia. Well, <laughs> North Rhine-Westphalia is not that bad a place at the end of the day. And let's remember that the transformation in Europe after 1989 uh, took a generation. The road's going to be bumpy, it's going to be uneven, it's going to be difficult. Uh, but I believe when people say there hasn't been a revolution, I say yes, there has been a revolution. And where isn't the revolution? It's in people's minds. It's in the minds of Arabs. They have discovered agency. They believe now that they can change their lives. They are no longer going to accept living under despots, be it the Assad regime in Syria, be it secular, be it religious. No, if things are turning against them, they're gonna go out on the street and they're gonna make their voices heard. And in my view, if any people should understand the struggle for freedom, for democracy, for more accountable societies, for more open societies, for decency, it's the Jewish people. Because we spent thousands of years struggling for just that. Alas, I think the reaction uh, in Israel in general to the Arab Spring has been uh, hostile. Uh, there's a kind of nostalgia for the old security agency to security agency relationship. That's gone, that's history. And I believe in the long term, if we could see a more open attitude on the Israeli side, there is huge potential uh, in this change um, for progress in the long term. And I believe that the changes that we've seen are irrevocable and will move forward toward the kinds of societies uh, I've just described. Um, in conclusion, I'd like to um, dedicate my award um, to the memory of my colleague, Anthony Shadid, uh, two-time Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, who died uh, in Syria shortly before uh, Marie Colvin. Uh, Anthony was an extraordinary correspondent, as those two Pulitzers uh, suggest. But much more than that, more than his journalism, he was, uh, he was a wonderful man, and he was an Arab American uh, who was deeply um, dedicated to, I think, an idea that unites us all in this room, which is getting beyond the competitive victimhood, getting beyond the competitive narratives, putting the lives of grandchildren ahead of the lives of one's ancestors, and trying to move forward towards some shared understanding that can be the basis for peace. Thank you. <laughs>